And we have a number, another member of our team, Chris Haynes, who is in Madison Square Garden getting ready for this game. And there is some unfortunate injury news for the New York Knicks. Chris, take it away. Yeah, well, it was devastating news for the New York Knicks organization when word got out that Julius Randle was undergoing season-ending right, um, right shoulder surgery. Remember, he uh, dislocated his shoulder in late January, and since then he's been trying to rehab and with the hopes of uh, the, the chance of trying to get back at some point this season. So I was able to speak with Julius Randle. He actually gave me a phone call this afternoon, and I'm going to share partially what he said to me in that phone interview. He said, listen, I want everyone to know that I did everything in my power to get back this season. That was my intention, to be playing right now. That's why I didn't opt out for surgery. That's, excuse me, that's why I didn't opt into surgery when it happened. He said, but what caused me to finally go through with getting surgery, he said about five weeks ago, he went through a full contact session and he re-injured the shoulder. And he said his shoulder never was the same. He said he couldn't get it back to where it was prior and it was an uphill battle ever since. He said, so that situation forced his hand to get surgery. He said he, sp he spoke to a couple of specialists. One specialist said he needed to get surgery right away. Another said, well, listen, if you don't, you risk injuring it again and you damaging it permanently. So he said the, si the situation was, it was a de tough decision that he felt he had to make right now. And he said he's at peace with going through the process because he didn't want to go through the situation saying, what if, what if I can get out there? He said he knows now that he could not get out there. And right now he's at peace and he will be reevaluated in five months after surgery. And he said he expects to be fully healthy going into next season. Now the Knicks also have another injury uh, concern with OG and Anobi. Um, he has missed his ninth straight game with um, elbow inflammation. I was told that he is tracking in the right area right now. The Knicks are being extra cautious in how they bring him back. They don't want the be they want his situation to be when he returns where he's in and out of the lineup. They want him 110% back healthy. Also, the priority is for the playoffs as it pertains to OG. If he's not able to get back into the regular season form, they're 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 fine with that. They want the playoffs to be the priority. Uh, OG, I was told, wants to get a game or two under his belt, but there's a chance that that won't happen. So devastating Knicks news on the Julius Randle front, but there's still encouraging signs on OG's front. Back to you. Chris Haynes, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. Shaq, heck of a polish you got there. <laughs> well, I do. I don't see a single streak. That's right. My father didn't play that. It's pretty good. Uh, as he tries to repair the desk, the Knicks are trying to deal with this this new information. OG, I feel like they, they've gotten used to Julius Randle. OG Ananobi was so big when he came in in January. Jamal, I'm curious. N now this team knows Randle's not coming back. Is there a piece of closure almost to where they're not wondering anymore who will be on the roster come playoff time? It's a piece of closure, and they've also had to play a certain way. So they, now they have to own that style. It's not like we have to adjust again because he's not coming back. You see what was good, you lean into that, and the OG piece is interesting because if he can still condition, his game is built on energy. It's built on defense, and you can do that no matter what. That, that doesn't take rhythm. So mm. it's about him. To me, he's the, the Bulls version of Lou Aldang who used to play for Tibbs. Yep. You know what I mean? So for him, it's about energy and have, make sure his condition is right. If there's anyone that's going to understand what it's like to be a, a point guard that has to lead the team, it would be you. So what's on Brunson's shoulders these days? Well, I think the same thing. You know, he's, he's played at a high, high level. Um, you know, he's had a lot of help from DiVincenzo, Josh uh, Hart Josh coming Hart, yeah. along, Josh Hart coming along. But in the playoffs, I think it's going to be – he has to play at his pace, right? So as a little guy, you're going to get beat up, right? You know, uh, you got to have big shoulders. You don't have a shack or any uh, a big dude to take a lot of uh, that contact and energy. So he's going to have to manage the game as well as manage his scoring and play at his pace. Pace is going to be the, the main thing for, I think, a Jalen Brunson in the playoffs to be successful. Let's take a look real quick at this team on opening night <clears throat> and their top six players versus their team right now. The Knicks have lost 152 games of injury. The only player still on the team, pretty much, from opening night, Jalen Brunson. The rest has completely shifted. They adjust and they prepare for the playoffs, big fella. Yeah, I think it was very devastating that he's not going to be there. You know, he was definitely the one or the two in the New York Knicks one-two punch. And I, I was very anxious to see him to get the superstar status. You know, he's been a star for a long time, but 
us three know you make you really make a name for yourself in the playoffs. Now, who's going to be that guy? Who's going to step up? You know, Brunson already does a lot. So I, I can see teams now saying, okay, Brunson, we're not going to let you average your 28, 29. Somebody else is going to have to step up. This is why I said the other day. I didn't know the news, but this is what I said the other day. If they play the Orlando Magic, they're going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. They're definitely going to be in trouble now. By the way, the record, the Magic 3-1 and one against the Knicks this season, and they are a very big team. DiVincenzo's been picking up some of the scoring for the Knicks. Injuries as well for Sacramento.